My general recommendation around caching is don't, but the reality of it is you're likely to introduce caching to increase performance and scalability. Once you do so though, there's some complexities to think about. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos around software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So the first kind of complexity you need to deal with is kind of figuring out what caching strategy you're actually gonna use. Um, so the first one I'm gonna describe is called write through. And the idea here being is that anytime you make changes to your database, you're gonna write your change to the database, whether that be inserting data, updating data, deleting data, whatever the case may be, some type of write. And then immediately, you're also going to update the cache. So remove something from the cache if you delete it from the database or update the cache object that's in cache. But immediately, you're gonna do the, uh, the second piece. So you're gonna to write to the database and then immediately write to the cache. The second strategy, which can be um, combined with this or standalone, is called the cache aside. And you can also, I guess, call this lazy loading. So this one can be employed by itself, this strategy, or with uh, write-throughs. But the idea being here is that your application, the first step it's gonna do is it's actually gonna check to see if something exists within the cache. If it does, then great, you're done. If it doesn't exist within the cache, the second step is then to go hit the database. So on a cache miss, hit the database, compose whatever cache value you want. And then the third step is then to write that to the cache so that all subsequent requests get that in the cache. So in code, this is how this would look. So I have a product query. It really just has kind of one method, get product. I have this private here, which is for just kind of building what the cache key is gonna be. But to illustrate the lazy loading cache aside in code, step one is hitting the cache to see if it, uh, it actually exists by that cache key. If it does, then we just return and exit early. If it doesn't exist, we're gonna go hit the database and build out our cache value. And then subsequently, we need to now add that to the cache and then we return. So that's basically how you can do cache aside, lazy loading. So the first complexity that I think most people think of is how do you invalidate a cache? Now, I think there's, if you're doing right through, this is fairly easy, as long as you have a way of knowing you have a kind of a centralized place where data is written to or how it's written to, and you can immediately update the cache. But this becomes more of a problem if your cache values are kind of a composition of a bunch of different things, then this can be way more complicated. So one way of doing, dealing with this is just having expiries or time to live on your cache object. So for this particular one, I could say daytime UTC now, um, let's add 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, this item will be purged from the cache. So ultimately we won't have a value and we'll kind of re-go through step two and step three to set it. But the thing you need to realize here is that you're gonna have potentially for up to three, uh, 30 minutes, uh, a stale value in your cache. Is that okay? How long is acceptable to have a stale value? These are the kind of the complexities and things you're gonna need to think about. So another way of invalidating, um, just not by expiry, but closer to when actual data is changed, is if you're using something like Entity Framework, you kind of do have a centralized location of where data is changed. Uh, assuming you're not changing data in some other APIs, but they've gotta be singularly done here is when you call save changes, you can look at the change tracker to figure out, okay, what particular entities changed? And you could publish um, some message to a message broker saying, okay, I have these uh, products were modified, publish those events. And then subsequently you could have a handler for those um, events to invalidate the cache. So invalidating the cache simply is removing that object from cache. And then we're using our cache aside lazy loading method just as usual now. So the next subsequent call will realize, oh, that's no longer in the cache. So it, it won't hit here. It will go to step two to repopulate what the cache value is and then set it back in the cache. So you can, you're still gonna have a kind of a window in time from when data is actually saved to the database to when your cache is repopulated, but it's gonna be much less than what you're just setting your expiry to. So the other benefit with the cache aside is that if the cache is actually unavailable, it's kind of your code will ultimately work like a, uh, a cache miss. So if the cache is unavailable, you can't actually get data from it. You ultimately are just gonna fall back to the database to build your cache value. 
Now, obviously you gotta have separate code to handle exceptions or timeouts and various things from the actual cache client, uh, but the actual flow is still the same in terms of steps. Here's the thing where things get sketchy and why this is more complicated is because if you had a pile of requests that normally are being fulfilled by the cache, but the cache is no longer available, they're gonna fall back to the database. Meaning now you've just added a ton more requests to your database. Can your database now handle that load? Under normal circumstances, you were just hitting the database to kind of repopulate cache, um, like lazy loading when an actual value is needed and you were doing it once for whatever a particular cache object. But because now the cache is down for whatever reason, you're sending a pile of requests to your database. Are you gonna overload the database now? How is this gonna affect the entire system? So again, more complexity. So as I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, if you can avoid caching, I recommend avoiding it. However, like I said, you're, you're probably gonna wanna start caching at some point for performance and scalability reasons. But the things to think about are when you're gonna be invalidating the cache, are you gonna do something like with a write through? Can you do it? Um, are you gonna do it asynchronously via messaging to invalidate the cache and realizing that you're gonna have stale data for a period of time? If you're not gonna do any write throughs or invalidating of cache, you're simply gonna use an, an expiry or time to live on the cache. What should that expiry be? How long can you deal with stale data? And if you're using the lazy loading cache aside method, realize that when you fail over or fall back to your database for whatever reason, maybe because your cache is down, can the database handle that load? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you're into software architecture and design videos around .NET, make sure to subscribe. Thanks.